Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Taylor Welding and I'm Chris. Hang on a second, Jose. He's welding up a storm over here, but I gotta get this out because I got some questions about how to set my welding machine. What do I do? Okay, this is common and there is no straightforward answer, but I'm gonna tell you what I know of what I've learned over the last 20 something years. Hopefully this will help somebody. Hit the like button, subscribe and ring the bell if you like this kind of information. So I'm gonna talk Primarily about these two, and that's for good reason. But first, we're going to talk about 60, 10, 1 8, because these are common in most all shops around the U.S. And, and oddly enough, uh, 60, 13 is more common overseas. Strange. Didn't know that. Learn that in the comments. If you're not in the comments, get in there and make some noise. Okay, so uh, my machine does not have a digital readout. Uh, a lot of them don't. Well, what do you do? Everybody wants to talk about amps and all these. None of that matters. You need to figure it out because if you don't have a digital readout, you know, you just don't have one. A lot of the older machines don't. When I got in the business, I just did whatever it took. They're like, hey, this is a good machine, and it's, it's not that much. So I said, I want that one. <laughs> and it welded good, and that's what I stuck with. Oh, yeah, I got to talk about this towards the end of the video, too. But so you walk up to your machine. You don't know anything about it. Set everything in the middle. If it's got arc force and it's got gears and it doesn't matter set it all in the middle and try to weld all right if it welds pretty decent holler at somebody like jose and say jose turn me up turn me up turn me up until it gets so hot you can't stand it and then turn it up a little more <laughs> find the hot end that's what i'm trying to tell you so you've you found the hottest you can stand it's eaten out and just going to crap make you a mark now go all the way back down to the other side find the cold side it's you can tell it, it won't hardly weld it's it's humping up it's not it's not very good all right make a mark as, as cold as you can weld with it somewhat now put it in the middle of those two marks so you got your cold side your hot side now you got it right in the middle it should weld pretty good it should be pretty close. Now, you'll have to adjust it one way or the other. Like I said, all of them are different, but that'll get you real close, and that'll probably help somebody. Now, it's, you're going to be, everything changes with different material, different thicknesses, how hot the material is. If you're welding on pipe and you've already put about two or three passes on it, it's going to be hot, especially if you're welding with somebody else. If you're brother-in-law and, and you're about to cap that baby with a 7018 and your brother-in-law on the piece of pipe, it's going to be hot on the bottom. So you might let it cool off for a second, let the let the other guy go first, and then you come in, you know, that'll, that'll help. But, uh, you know, if it's real thin, you'll have to turn it down, but that'll get you close. So you're in the middle, you, and that works for all machines. Now, when you get this baby running pretty good, when you, when you feel like you've got the heat pretty much mastered, you can take, um, your 332, which is one size down. Now this is a tip that I learned through the years. The 332-7018 is gonna run just a little too hot, usually. So this rod burns, the same heat that runs this rod burns this rod a little too hot, all right? I'll talk about those later. That's five millimeter and a 7018 one eighth. But, uh, and a matter of fact, while I'm here, this 6010, the heat on the 6010 to run just about right on everything, will run the 7018 pretty good too. Okay, so you're, you're, you've got your marks and you're going to be pretty much in there all the time. Now, uh, I want to get into some questions real quick. That'll get you started on your machine. I got a few questions that you guys sent me. What's a worrisome, worrisome amount of hours when buying a used welder? Or what should you look for? And doing this. This is Zach. Thank you, Zach, for the question. Um, when it comes to used welding machines, I've never bought a new one just because, you know, I was able to buy my first one for $6,600 and the machine sold for about $12,000, so it's about half price. And I bought another one for $5,000 and it sold, at that time they were selling for like twelve or $13,000. They were going up and, I, and it, they only had like 1,100 hours on them or something. On a diesel machine, that is nothing. Nothing. Uh, I've got a Vantage right now that uh, you just push the button and it runs and it's got eight, over 8,000 hours on it. I'm not scared of it at all. 
Okay, with that being said, you don't know what that machine has been through. You don't know if somebody's been gouging with it or burning, uh, you know, jet rods all day, every day. You know, that's hard on them. I mean, it is. So my welding teacher gave me this piece of advice, and I never really used it much because I've, I've had some welding machines that uh, wouldn't take it. But let me tell you what I'm talking about. If you're just walking up to a welding machine and... Uh, you don't know anything about it, you're at an auction or something, you know, you don't have the opportunity to weld with it, whatever. You can hook your ground up, and this is a stinger, but a lot of people use them for grounds, and get the other side, and you can stick a piece of metal in here or a welding rod or whatever, and just arc off and turn it, turn it wide open and, and arc off. Uh, you can actually just take the ground and uh, cross the negative and the positive. You can take a piece of iron and just cross it and see if it'll take it. See if the motor will, you know, bog down and really eat and go. You, that's a good way to gut check the motor. And if it peters out and dies, you know, that might make you think the motor's weak. Now, that doesn't work all the time, in my opinion. That was what I was taught. My welding teacher told me. So that's how you see if the guts are good in the welding machine is just, you know, direct short it wide open. Uh, you know, I'm just telling you how I was taught. Now... What I would recommend is bring your, take your welding hood with you and set up and weld with it. Get it good and hot. Take some big rods with you. Weld them. See if it'll take that big rod and, and, you know, and the motor doesn't start bogging down. Uh, also, turn it way down. Uh, see, see how good it welds at low heat. Play around with it. You know, watch it idle for a minute. Uh, you'll know pretty quick if something's wrong with it. As far as hours go... You know, gas welding machines, I wouldn't think would get, uh, if, I, if I told you I'd be lying, I don't really know on the, on the gas welders. I've never, I think I might have owned one uh, or used one several times, but I don't think I've ever owned one for years on end. All I've ever had is Kubota diesels, and that was for good reason. Uh, like I said, when I broke out, I had to go to work. I didn't have time to mess with points and a carburetor on the old you know, uh, red faces and all that old welding machine stuff that welds so good. I didn't have time. I, I needed to put one on the truck and go to work. So I went with the reliable Kubota diesel, and I've never been let down. Uh, a lot of people talk crap about them, but uh, they've always been really good to me. So I hope that helps. Next question. Hi, Chris. I have a uh, same stubby rod saver that you like. It was given to me and I cannot figure out how to connect the cable. All right, yeah. So, that was loud. Here's how you do it. First off, stick your cable through this handle. <laughs> or you'll be doing it again. Slide your cable through here, all right? And it's just cut off flat. Uh, you can cut it back some, your cable. I don't have one with me. But anyway, your cable goes through here, and that point will start to insert into the cable. All right? When you get it really good and going in the cable and it won't go anymore, back it off until you get to these threads. When you get to those threads, hold that cable in there and start to tighten down, and it'll kind of act like a collet. It'll kind of wedge itself in there as you tighten it up. And I can't say I've ever had one come apart. It's a really good way to put it together. Now notice uh, that hole fits a one-aught lead. Uh, or maybe it's a number one. So you might have to, you know, mess with that this end of it to get it to slide in there right. But once you do, it'll wedge in there. And uh, man, this thing's really, I've always been amazed how good these were built. I mean, that's a solid chunk of brass, bronze. I don't know what it is. But anyway, I wish they made them more. Uh, I'd be, I'd buy stock in them. All right, next question. It's actually not a question. It's a, just a cool uh, comment. I watched a video where you were encouraging our kids to go into welding a career. I forwarded it to my daughter, and here we are six months later after she graduated high school, and she started a welding class in January. Thank you for your encouragement. Uh, in regards to her basic supplies to start, what do you recommend or not recommend? Okay. To get started welding, you just need a welding hood and some gloves. Uh, what, if she's going to school, they're going to have just about everything else. 
Uh, there's no right or wrong. I would discourage anybody from a chip and hammer. I hate chip and hammers. All they do is mar up your pretty weld. You see people in there just whacking and beating all over their, I uh, hate that. So try to encourage her to hit it with a file, knock the stuff off, maybe a wire wheel. They don't like you to use wire wheels in school because of obvious reasons. But that's really it. Um, you know, as you progress, uh, ask me any other questions, I'll be willing to help you. But try to encourage her to not get discouraged. Only weld as much as you can stand, and when it really starts going to pot, take a break. Take a break. Go think about it. Let your metal cool off. I had so, such a hard time in school by getting the metal too hot. I was wanting to, you know, go, 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 go. And it, I would get to the cap, and it would be too hot. And I'd actually get it so hot, it would break on the bend test outside the weld. <laughs> I was getting it so hot. I, I didn't. There wasn't slag in it. I don't know why else it would do it, but uh, it was real discouraging. So be real careful getting your weld too hot in the beginning. It's just... You know, you're getting going and, and it'll start going to crap and you won't know why. Nine, time, nine times out of ten is because it was too hot. Uh, so after you get done welding and the plate's hot, go cool it off. A lot of times they'll have a big trough and cool your metal off and, and start over. Take all those steps each time. And, you know, if it's too hot, if it's still too hot, turn it down. That's about as far as I can go uh, with you right now without another question. So... Ask anything uh, that you want to know about. I'll share anything I got. And uh, guys, have an awesome, awesome day. I'll see you in the next one. Later.